Okay, folks, today we're going to talk about my driveway gate. You can see I have the top cover of a LiftMaster actuator arm. This actuator arm gave up. The gearing on the inside is fine. There's some switches that give it the limit forward and, and the pullback limit, but the motor looks like it's gone. So what I did was I opened it up to look at it, see if it was something I could easily fix. Doesn't look like that. So what I ended up doing was looking for the motor. The motor itself is around 200 bucks. And then you have to go through the hassle of replacing all this. So I decided to scrap this arm. A new replacement LiftMaster LA400 arm is anywhere from $600 to upwards of $1,400. That's not installed. That's just the part. My controller board, where this thing plugs into, is fine. So I pulled the controller board out, thinking that maybe that was it. And I did some testing and found out that the controller board is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's right here in the motor. Didn't really want to put $200 into an old arm. So let me show you what I did. So I went out and purchased a brand new off-the-market Chinese uh, actuator arm comes with everything this one in particular is a vivor um purchased this for like roughly around 200 bucks that includes everything let me take you over there and show you how it looks so as you can see this is my gate and basically what i've got here is this vivor arm this particular arm doesn't really have any intelligence except for two items how far how far it's going to go forward to push the gate open and how far it's going to come back when the gate reaches its end point and it stops. And this is where I was struggling. So let me show you what happens. Let's say you've got your mounting bracket and you've got it mounted here. As you can see, my gate is completely closed. However, this is not pulled in all the way there's still about two or three inches left. What was happening when I first installed it is that it kept wanting to close further until this piece right here was right up there. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. So what I ended up doing was taking it apart to a certain degree and figuring out how they're telling the motor to stop. And the way that they're doing it is if you look down here, right up in here, there are limit switches there's one here and there's one here and this arm flows back and forth between this so what ends up happening is you adjust this side for how much you want it to open and you adjust this side for how much you want it to close before it cuts the power they do have a label that says do not adjust this but that's really ridiculous because not everybody's gate is going to be the same not everybody's mounting is going to be the same. You get the point. So what I did was I moved this switch. It slides. It has one screw. You, you loosen the screw. You slide it wherever you want the motor to stop, and then you tighten up the screw. Same thing for this side. Loosen the screw, adjust it, and they're magnetic switches, and tighten up the screw. So now what ends up happening is my gate closes pretty much spot on, and when it opens it opens pretty much spot on. So now that we've talked about the arm, let's talk about the controller. So you can see this is my original LiftMaster LA control box, wired in and everything. So what I've got is a couple of things. This controller box comes with this arm for $200. However, it is a very lackluster uh, controller it basically has your connections for your motor it has your connections for your battery and your charger so what this thing does this box contains two batteries that are sitting behind here like right in in this area two tw uh, 12 volt batteries so that gives it 24 volts so when you activate this thing it basically uses those 24 volts to open this dc and then your charger which is your plug here 
and I'm using the original charger from my LiftMaster because it was already fitted in there and the wires are run. I basically tapped onto that charger lead right there. And so it charges the batteries back up to 24 volts. Okay, so now that we've got all the information on this controller out of the way, let me point out a few other things about this controller. So as you can see here, there's some dip switches. And so this first dip switch allows you to toggle between whether the arm itself is going to be on the inside pushing out to open versus being on the outside and pulling in to open. So you set this dip switch according to that. Um, and then there's uh, the second dip switch, which is for auto close, meaning if the gate is open for X amount of time and you can set the time on this controller, um, it'll automatically close. I have that turned off. Um, so yeah, so it does have that functionality. These right here, these three, these are interesting. So if you turn the auto close on, one of these, I think this one right here, is the time that you set. So it's a variable and you set the time like maybe two minutes versus five minutes, etc. cetera. Um, and then these two right here, how hard it's going to hit when it closes. So that's the stopping force. And then this one right here is the how much pressure it's going to give when it's opening. So it's, it's pretty adjustable. Um, now, the one part about this controller that I don't like is the fact that this controller only works with their proprietary remote controls. These are small keychain little remotes, and so you can't use a LiftMaster type controller, which is what my LA400 obviously worked with. So that's a huge problem, and most vehicles nowadays have you know home link built in so you can't use home link with this either it won't accept that so in my next video um which follows this one i'm going to talk about adding home link and i'm going to do that via this l uh, la uh, add-on receiver and this receiver accepts the antenna the antenna is right out here um and you wire it in and i'll talk about how to wire that in uh, but that concludes this so bottom line on this video is is if you have an la 400 liftmaster gate opener that gives up and you don't want to spend another additional you know let's say thousand dollars to have somebody come in and install a new gate opener that's la liftmaster la 400 the easier solution is to look for one of these uh, chinese made actuator arms and you can retrofit it pretty easily um, you know I used my existing box I used my existing 24 volt uh, adapter from LiftMaster I used the two batteries that are back here um, inside this box so I mean I was able to salvage a lot of it and the controller that comes with it is much smaller so if you remove the LiftMaster controller you've got ample space to mount this as you can see it's working and so I'll show you how this works so basically Here's my remote, and I'm not gonna use the original remotes. This is the one that I have in my hand, but um, you'll see my gate open right here. And it does a good job. It, uh, it, it, I mean, it's virtually the same as my LiftMaster. And it gets to the end, it's real soft right there. You know, that's it. And then as soon as I'm done, I hit the button again, and you'll see it close. Closes very smooth and soft, and that's it. So this this arm works great. Um, like I mentioned previously, um, you do have the limit switches on each side, and you have to adjust those, and that's it. And then just make sure that your brackets are in good shape. The existing brackets for my LA400 were on the outside, so I actually redid it and welded some new ones on the inside. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. If there's any questions I can answer for you, please leave them in the comments. Um, like I said, this, this actually fits perfect in this LiftMaster box, and it works out perfect. 
In my next video, we'll talk about the add-on home link adapter. All right, guys. Thank you for watching.